If you could use faster internet or better coverage, this video is for you. I've made the ultimate video guide about mesh Wi-Fi, where you can learn about better coverage, better speed, and some great tips on how to optimize your Wi-Fi. So, welcome to the ultimate mesh Wi-Fi guide. Hi, my name is Glenn, and I'm here at Basis IT, and uh, let me introduce you to Mesh Wi-Fi. So what is Mesh Wi-Fi? Well, first of all, let me tell you that Mesh Wi-Fi was actually inherited by the military, which was something they used in the battlefield. And several decades later, it's finally been made available to the regular consumer and companies. Now let's start at looking at how it's all this set up. Let's just take a cup of coffee before we get to it. So in a mesh Wi-Fi network, you have the main router and you have a couple of nodes, also called satellites. Well, you place the main router at your internet connection and then you place these nodes around the house. All these nodes and this main router talk to each other and this creates one big Wi-Fi network with a great coverage and great speeds as well. Now, a lot of people have asked me, well, can't I just use a Wi-Fi extender? And the short answer is, no, you cannot do that. Because it's for everywhere that this is a good solution. So you have this Wi-Fi extender and you place it at the end of the Wi-Fi signal. So even though it gets the signal and sends 100% signal to the rest of the house, it only receives about, let's say, 20% of your total internet speed. And these 20% of your total internet speed is what it sends to the rest of the house. Now, another problem about Wi-Fi extender is that if you walk out of your main Wi-Fi zone and walk into the new Wi-Fi zone that your extender has created, then you will shortly lose your connection to the Wi-Fi and the internet because it loses and drops the connection of the main Wi-Fi and then it will take some time before it connects to the new Wi-Fi. And that could be anywhere from 3 seconds to 20 seconds. Besides that, Mesh Wi-Fi also offers some great new technologies through their app. You see, most of the Wi-Fi, Mesh Wi-Fi is actually set up with an app. And in this app, you can control a lot of things on the network. It's smart and it's super intuitive. So you got things like your which websites uh, you should be able to uh, visit and you can have some parroting control over your kids like if you want them not to be able to use the internet uh, between 12 a.m. and 5 a.m. And you can do a malware protection which is as built in, firewall protection which it also has been built in and a lot of other things. So of course it's different from manufacturer to manufacturer which kind of a uh, services their app uh, offers, but you still have some really, really great functions. So as far as I see it, the time for regular routers, internet Wi-Fi routers, has come and has gone. It's, uh, it is a dying species. Mesh Wi-Fi is the new thing, and unless you live in a very tiny place, you will always use a mesh Wi-Fi and not just one simple router. All the manufacturers know that mesh Wi-Fi is the next big thing. And uh, even Google has made their own uh, mesh Wi-Fi and so with a lot of other manufacturers also. Let's welcome the future and let's stop talking and let's get down to business and set this mesh Wi-Fi up. So in a mesh Wi-Fi we have this main router. Boom. And this main router is usually connected to the internet. Um, Let's say this is the internet. Bloop. And uh, besides that, you have these small nodes, also called satellites. These satellites you place around the house, so to speak, like this. And then all the nodes, all the satellites and the router will talk to each other. And they will all create the same Wi-Fi, which you can walk in and out of without losing your Wi-Fi connection, connection and which also has the same Wi-Fi name. Now usually you would connect your main router that's this one and it doesn't matter which uh, which plugin or which uh, I don't know what you call it. 
I don't know. Which thing you use here. So, do it like this, and then you plug this into your, um, not your coffee, but your internet, okay? And then you have wireless access to these. Now let's go have a look at my router. So I'm just gonna go into the, I don't know what you call it in English. That's just these pair of skates in the way. <laughs> now, my router is here. Actually, this is not a router, but it is the equivalent to it. This is because I have a fiber connection and I have this box. But it doesn't matter. You still have your fiber or your internet connection coming in here into this box or a router. And then you have this jack that you plug in with the main node in your um, in your mesh Wi-Fi. Now never mind that this goes into this drop here, but this is because I have uh, pulled some cables in my house. So you don't need to know that. Just know that you put this cable here from your router into your main node in your mesh Wi-Fi. Now as you can see right here, I will now connect my main router to my internet cable, which is right here. So, like this. And then in this example, it doesn't matter which port you use. But I'll just take your manual. And I know I'm a bad example. I know it, sorry, but I just moved in and this is a complete mess. But anyway, you get the point. So, a little powerful router. And remember, this cable goes to my fiber box or your router. In your case, it would probably be a router. So, and now the mesh is starting up. Okay, now it's time to set up my mesh Wi-Fi with the phone on my app. Or the app on my phone. <laughs> it's in Danish, so I translate. It says, let's begin and ask me to select my device. It tells me what kind of cables I need. I press next. And it tells me to turn off my modem. I press next. And then it shows me how to connect all my cables. I press next once again. And then it tells me that I should wait until my router blinks blue. And now it's searching for it. And it says it found it. And it's creating connection. And then it asks me where my router is. I select the living room and press next. And then it makes some determination of what kind of internet type I have. And then it asks me for the name on my Wi-Fi and the password that I want to have every time I connect to my Wi-Fi. So as you can see, it's pretty intuitive. Your setup might look a little bit different depending on which manufacturer that made your mesh Wi-Fi. And I press next. And it says it's creating my Wi-Fi network. It says create connection. Do you allow your Wi-Fi to be connected to this phone? Yes. And now it's done connecting to my mesh Wi-Fi. And then it's testing the internet connection and tells me I'm online. And now it tells me that I'm done. And I can press done or I can add another router. Alright, so just to show you, um, this is where I usually sit on the couch and uh, the router is now placed on the table beside me. It's right over there. Yes. So let's start by testing my internet speed. I press go and it says uh, connecting and it starts to test my download speed. It should be around 500 or 600 or something like that. Let's see how far it goes. Come on, come on, come on. And this is megabit per second. And it says 530. And now it's testing my upload speed, which it says 232. And it's normal that the upload speed is slower than the download speed. Now, as you saw, I only have about 500 megabit in download and 200 megabit in upload on my Wi-Fi. So why is that when I have a 1000 megabit line coming into the house? Well, the reason for that is that my uh, technology on my mesh Wi-Fi, and this could also be on router, the technology only supports around 500 or 600 megabit 
uh, when using something called bonding, and that's some technical stuff. Um, so the problem is that my Wi-Fi is only half the speed of the incoming line. Now the way I see it, then you can buy yourself poor in mesh Wi-Fi because you can get some very expensive one. But why would you do that? I mean, if you have a 1000 megabit line coming into the house, then a mesh Wi-Fi supporting AC technology, then that's enough. Then you have the, the speeds all matching together. The only reason why you would buy something faster than that as a mesh Wi-Fi, that would be if you do file transfer in the house. Okay, so by now you should be done setting up the mesh Wi-Fi and all the satellites should have been positioned correctly and probably you also tested them. If you haven't tested them, then use an app uh, called Speed Test by Oakley, O-O-K-L-Y, and test the speeds around the house. So moving on, you probably noticed that I've changed clothes and stuff like that during this video. What? What the? And that's because I'm trying to test out and get the best video quality. You see, I've just started recording these videos and the start of this video just looked terrible. A yellow lightning and the table where I had the satellite positioned, it, it blinked and stuff like that. So everything looked terrible. I'm trying to improve the lightning and the audio. And this is where I'm at right now using some extra lightning and some microphones. So I hope you like this. Now, one of the tips I had for you is if you need to test your internet speed to make sure your ISP, internet service provider, gives you the correct speed that you're paying for, then you need to do it with, with a cable and not using the Wi-Fi. So you plug your cable into your router and then into your computer and then you test the speed. You must remember that if you do this, then the cable has to be a category 5E or 6 or above. Otherwise the cable might not be able to handle the speed of the internet. Now you can see the type of cable which category it is by reading on the cable. It says CAT 5E or 6 or something like that. Now speaking about cables, you should also note that if you lack ports in your uh, router and you need to connect a Philips Hue or a printer or something else, then you might want to buy a switch. And if you buy a switch, I highly recommend you buy a, a switch blah, a switch that's able to handle 1000 megabit or 1 gigabit, that's the same, uh, in speed. And furthermore, it should be an unmanaged switch. Wow, it's difficult speaking English. And furthermore, it should be an unmanaged switch um, because you might not be able to set up a managed switch. Another thing that's very important is that you disable the Wi-Fi on the router. Not the mesh Wi-Fi, but on the router. So if you have a Wi-Fi that comes with the router that you get from your ISP, then you should just disable it so the mesh Wi-Fi and the, um, the router's Wi-Fi doesn't compete about the signal. And the reason for that being is that it might cause instability and might cause your Wi-Fi internet speed and local speed to slow down. Now, the app on your phone that you probably use to install your mesh Wi-Fi with gives you a lot of possibilities to enhance your security. So enable all the security you can to make yourself or give yourself the best chance of not getting attacked by hackers, malware and stuff like that. So often it will be on the app in your phone and if you haven't got one of those then you can probably log into the mesh Wi-Fi's interface and enable it in there. Um, please refer to the manual. Now you may hear a lot of talk about channels and it used to be a big deal but it's not anymore because most of these uh, modern routers and mesh Wi-Fi's how to select the best channel. So just to put it in short so you know what I'm talking about, we have two main um, Wi-Fi signals. We have the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz. Now let's talk about the 2.4. This is where it doesn't have that many channels, I think it's 11, 
And if you live in an apartment or close with someone else, then you might, uh, what can we call it, fight for these channels. So if you have two routers both using channel 6, then might compete and slow each other down or make each other unstable. So that's the 2.4. And the 2.4 is the longest reaching network signal, but it isn't that fast as the 5 gigahertz network signal. Now the 5 gigahertz network, network signal doesn't reach that far, but it's faster. Besides that, it has a lot more channels and it's probably not a problem uh, with more users or more routers using the 5 gigahertz network. Now, I know this might be confusing, but it's just to tell you the main technology behind it and why, um, why you shouldn't care about it anymore. Just make sure that your Wi-Fi signal uh, auto-selects the channel. And you can do that in, in, the, in the interface as I talked about before. And you can do it in there. Now, as everybody else around the internet, I would really, really love it if you would give me a like or comment, because otherwise I don't know how many likes it and or dislikes it. And I've really worked a lot of hours to make this video, so I would be very glad and appreciate it. And also add a comment if there's something uh, I forgot or something I, do, I can do better or the lightning sucks or whatever. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, and in the future, if you want to get a notice every, every time I make a video like this, please subscribe on YouTube. Thanks. So that wraps up this video. I hope you could use the video to get a better, faster and safer, safer Wi-Fi, or at least point you in the right direction. Anyway, um, have a great day and thanks for watching.